All right, mic check, mic check. Does this thing still work? Haven't made a video in two weeks. Does this still thing still work? Okay, it looks like it's working. All right, Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about Sean Layden's latest comments and criticisms of the gaming industry. So Sean Layden, um, former PlayStation CEO, former PlayStation, a lot of things. Of course, he held several roles. Um, but he has criticized the, the current gaming industry um, a lot, and he has predicted a lot of things um, a long time ago where he thought the gaming industry was going to go, and he w he's been right about a lot of those things. So uh, who was he uh, talking to? So he was on the stage at Gamescom Asia, and he talked about um, how the gaming industry now has a collapse of creativity. So here's what he said. He said today the entry cost for making AAA games is in the triple digit millions now. And he's always talking about gaming budgets ballooning. He's talked about that for a long time. Uh, I think naturally risk tolerance drops. Talking about the companies, they're willing to take a risk is a lot lower because they don't want to lose out on that type of money. So they go with the safer options. And he says, and you're looking at sequels, um, you're looking at copycats because the finance guys who draw a line. He said, well, if Fortnite makes made this much money in this amount of time, my Fortnite knockoff can make this amount in this amount of time. We're seeing a collapse of creativity in games today with studio consolidation and the high cost of production. He also said double A games are virtually gone, um, which he said is a threat to ecosystem. Um, so first. It's one of the th so just to comment on him saying that, you know, the clones and, you know, my Fortnite is going to make more money than your Fortnite. One of the things I've always said about that is if you want to compete with a game with a specific game, the worst thing to do is try to make another game like it, right? I always use the Call of Duty example. If you go back to PS3 360 gen, you had a lot of developers trying to challenge Call of Duty by making another Call of Duty. I'm like, bro, people are just going to be like, if why would I play your Call of Duty when I can just go play Call of Duty? I've always said, if you want to compete with something, it, the best way to compete with something is to not actually compete with it. It's just find a pocket and a lane. You could be similar. Right, you can have a first person shooter, but if you want to compete with it, is to find your own pocket and corner the market in that first person shooter genre, but do something different. Right? For example, there there are first person shooters that are very different and they're not competing with each other. Call of Duty is very different from Battlefield. Battlefield is different from for, for example, Rainbow Six Siege. So if if Battlefield ever try to directly compete with Call of Duty and, and, and do exactly what Call of Duty does, it would, it would not work. They would completely lose because the Call of Duty fans would once again just play Call of Duty. And, you know, obviously Battlefield has, 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 its, has it, had its failures lately, not because they're trying to compete with Call of Duty because they've tried to copy other things. And it's like, bro, people who wanted those other things, they're going to play the games that do those things. You should do what the Battlefield fans have played Battlefield for. Um, so that's always been a mistake to try to compete with something by doing with what doing what that competitor does. It sometimes it can work if you're early in the game, right? If you're early in the arms race for that genre and there's not a lot of competitors, there's there's place for multiple to be in that lane and at the top to and to be successful. But if you get in there late and you try to do what they do, bro, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, and he talks about like trip, the double A games are gone now. I think there are double A games, but the problem is double A games stretch them th themselves really thin to try to be triple A games. That's, that's all I ever see. It's, it's, it's games that are clearly double A. And for some reason they want to portray themselves as triple A and they're not able to compete on the triple A level. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, there's, there's a bunch of games. Oh God, what was this fucking game called? It was first shown at the, um, the Xbox, um, 
showcase. Uh, it was this chick with two. She she was like dual wielding two axes. When I looked at that game, I'm like, man, this is a double A game that's pushing itself way too hard to be triple A, way too hard. So you fail instead of double d- doubling down and focusing on what you can do well. You try to overextend yourself into AAA to do the things that AAA games do, and you're and that's just only going to make the games worse. Instead of just trying to focus on a game that's small in scope but has an identity and knows what it does well. And there's another game that, that I that I played. I think it was made by Focus Home Interactive. I I don't know. <laughs> I guess the, you know it kind of shows what you what these games aren't making a last impression in my brain um, because I can't even fucking think of the names of them right now. There's another one I played where. Uh, Y'all be y'all will be able to figure it out, but it's not coming to my mind right now. Where you play as a dude, and then you pl- then you also play as the ghost, the female ghost that's following I, following him. That's another example of a game I played where I'm like, bro, this is a really this really is a double A game that's trying really hard to be on a triple A level, and it just fails because of that. Um, if I if the name of the games come to my mind, I'll I'll try to uh, bring it up. But y'all y'all figure out what I'm talking about. Um, now a lot of people are now criticizing Sean Layden because of his comments about the collapse of creativity because they blame him. They think he's one of the catalysts of this um uh, this collapse of creativity because they believe he is behind the prominent rise of the what people co- consider the Sony template, the third person um action adventure game with some rp with small rpg elements and um stealth elements and my thing my thing about it is did we did we see a rise of those type of games um because sony made because sony uh made those uh during last gen sure but i don't necessarily blame the way I look at it as is like, bro, I, I don't think gamers want creativity. And I've said this for a long time. I've said, and I'm on record saying it for years, creativity is overrated. Innovation is overrated. That's not really what gamers want. That's not really what sells. And people don't like when I say it, oh, you know, they be like, oh, humbug. Bro, I, I think the proof is in the pudding. Like, you don't, and when I say creativity and innovation, I'm talking about games that are doing something outside of the box that really hasn't really been explored before and that isn't safe, that isn't traditional, that isn't conventional, what you expect. Those games don't really do well and don't really succeed. And I think they don't succeed for a reason, though. I don't I think. In large part, it's just not what gamers want. You, you're going to get most of those type of games that take chances in like the indie space. Um, so it, it is this, you know, risk versus reward thing. And it's and it's and you can make an, arg- an argument. Is it nature versus nurture? Is it that these games don't succeed because uh, they're just not? Is it that the, these games don't succeed because people don't want them? Or is it that? Uh, the games don't succeed because the industry isn't doing their best to support the type of creative creative games. I'm leaning towards people just don't want them, right? I think when you look at the industry, what sells, what people get excited for, what people are hyped for, and I know a lot of people like to deny this, but I've been saying, bro, I don't think people give a fuck about creativity or, or innovation like that. The games that people get the most excited for are games that just do something really well. That has been something that has been done before, but is just done to a better magnitude. Sequels, remakes, and I'm com- and I've been on record, but I'm I'm completely fine with with my favorite games aren't games that do anything new. My favorite games are just games that do do the things better than the last game. That's why innovation, because you can be the first person to do something. You could make a game, create, you can make the most creative game, but what's the, what the fuck is the purpose if nobody wants it? Being creative for the sake of being creative is completely pointless. So developers always have to strike this, 
this balance of we want our game to be different, new, innovative, but we also want to create something that is actually fun to people. So if it's creative, but it ain't fun, who gives a fuck? If it ain't going to sell units, who gives a fuck? Because it's not just about people look at sales like, oh, it's just about making money. No, but it's about being smart also, because why would you try to create a product if nobody wants it? Like take sales completely out of it. Take money completely out of it. In, in any situation, why would you create something that nobody wants? It's a complete waste of time. It doesn't make any sense. That's how I look at like many things like outside of the gaming industry. If I was like it, it, when you even when it comes to making videos, really. Why would you make a video that nobody wants to watch? Why would you do anything in life? That nobody wants, you get what I'm saying? Like I, I get some people do certain things out of passion, but if you're trying to create a, a product, whatever it is. Why would you do it if nobody wants it? It just do, it just doesn't fucking make sense to me, right? It's and that it it goes back to the argument about like uh you know Japan Studios. People, oh my god, the fucking incessant crying about Japan Studios. Oh, you shut them down, bro. Y'all didn't buy those games. Y'all didn't buy those games. So what you are telling me or the company is Stop making these games. Make something we want. That's why I'm saying it's not about necessarily about sales. It's about the message. What you are telling the company when you don't support that creative game is, hey, you are wasting your time making this creative, artistic, innovative game. We don't care. Make, make use of your time, which you're not going to get back. And at least make something we want. It's about time efficiency. I think the time efficiency, efficiency aspect is something that gamers and people don't really think about. Like if I was a developer, bro, I would be pissed off if I wasted five years of my life that I'm not going to get back. For 10 people to play my game, Nigga, I would want to off myself. I might get demonetized for that. Like, like I would be depressed, bro. Five years. Five, six years to make one thing that nobody gives a fuck about? Bro, I'd be like, yo, what? Like, you, do you understand how long five years is? Like, how much shit happens in five years just for you to release one? Th Imagine you work on something, anything, for five years, and then you put it out, you're excited, you put it out, and nobody gives a fuck. I'd be like, bro, I just wasted five years of my life which is a long goddamn time. You know, you know, think about like what, what, where you were five years ago. So I think people don't put as much as the emphasis on that, on the time efficiency and what it means just as much as the sales. So I, I just think gamers have made it like when you think about this, like the top selling games of this year, EA sports. Um, and this is from, um, Sir Kana, formerly N N NPD, right? The tops, and, and typically, yeah, the top 10, top 20 selling games, it, it's, it's fairly predictable every year. We know what it's going to be. And it, ain't, and it ain't the most creative games. Like based this, and this is from August, I think. This is not completely updated. Uh, 2024, top selling games. EA Sports, um, College Football, Hell Divers, Call of Duty 3, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 3, uh, Elden Ring. Dragon's Dogma 2, MLB The Show, w, uh, 2K 20, uh, WWE 2K24, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, you probably will be able to put um, Black Myth in there. We know Black Myth might be number one now because this isn't fully updated. Um, Silent Hill Remake sold just sold a million in, what, a, a week? Um, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, that game just sold, I, I forgot, how, what was it, 3 million? So when you look at the list of what people are excited for and care about, bruh, it's, it's not the creative and innovative games. It's fucking Dragon Ball, which, yeah, I, I understand people have been saying, oh, this one's different, but bro, in the grand scheme of things, People just want the same shit they've been getting just better. That's what people want.
So I think gamers are culpable. If you want to say creativity is dying, bro, gamers are definitely guilty of that. Absolutely guilty of that. I know I'm guilty of it, but but I listen, I've been on record saying I don't really give a fuck about creativity. When cuz because when I look at the games that are creative, they tend to be the games that I don't really care about. When I see all these these games that are different and creative, I'm like, nope, don't care about that. Don't like that. So to me, I'm you know, it's a selfish thing. It's a selfish hobby. To me, I, yes, I would rather you just make just do what you did last time, but change up a few things and deliver it in a different package. Then for you to give me something um, completely new, but it, but it's not something I even care or like. So I'm 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 personally OK with it. I mean, even when you look at games like that, Exp that expedition game. Right. And I think. I think we're at a point now, not only at diminishing returns um, in terms of visuals, we're at diminishing returns um, in terms of creativity also, because, bro, we're. I, th I think there are plenty of ideas left out there to explore in gaming. But I don't think it's a lot of ideas that people are going to like or care about. The ideas that are left out there, because a lot of shit has been has been explored. A lot of shit is unexplored. But the ideas out there that people are stretching for and, and looking into, it'd be it'd be some shit that that that, listen, that honestly people are looking at like, bro, I don't. What is that? I don't I don't care about that. I, I don't give a fuck. Like when you look at that game, Expedition, what was it? Expedition 33, um, which people are very excited about because they look at it as a twist on the um, the classic turn based RPG, Expedition 33, Claire Obscure. When I look at this game, this game isn't necessarily doing anything new. And I'm excited about this game. Right. What it what they're what they're adding to the turn-based genre is not something new they they're kind of just taking it to a different level as far as this this adding this level of interaction to a turn-based rpg genre that is that is usually just you select an attack in a menu and that's it right where it's just menu shuffling and you and you select an attack and then that's the that's the limitation of the game Games have done that before. RPGs have done that before. This isn't the first game to do that at all. Like Mario RPG did that back in 97. What what Expedition 33 is doing. And they, that's not even the first game. I'm trying to remember. There's there's this game that did it before Mario RPG where they added this level of interactivity um, in between you just selecting uh, your, your moves and, and attacks. There was a game before that. So this is not nothing new. They're just taking that and putting their twist on it, twist on it and adding to it. So most of once so adding to my point that most of the shit that people get excited for, it's not new. It's just expounded. It's just added upon. And that's what people really get excited for. Shit that's been done before, but you add a little spice to it. I mean, the, the last thing you could really say that happened that's super innovative in gaming might be the, ne the Nemesis system, which happened in, in 2014. One second, I'm checking. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it might be the when you consider truly innovative an entire system created, it, it, it will probably be the Nemesis system. And that happened 10 years ago. And because they put a fucking um trademark on it we haven't seen it since it's supposed to be in that wonder that upcoming wonder woman game right so i believe gamers are responsible for this lack in creativity or the collapse of creativity because more than ever before it's it's a bigger risk for these developers to take risk it's a bigger risk than ever before because of the balloon cost of all types of games, you you take a risk, and bro, that might be your last risk. So I can't necessarily completely blame the the companies, the suits, and the developers. I do blame them for chasing trends, 
right? If you just completely just straight up chase a, a trend and try to completely mimic something, I think they're idiots. I think you're you're an idiot if you do that and not even try to put your own like unique twist on things. But I can't blame them for staying safe. When gamers themselves have proven that, hey, we won't support something that's new and innovative. Um, Black Myth Wukong, right? I brought up Expedition. Black Myth Wukong, what that, that game came out and, you know, of course, it's lar largely in part to um, it's selling very well in China. But that was one of the big hits this year. Black Myth, and I really like that game. Black Myth Wukong don't do, really don't do nothing fucking new. There's virtually nothing creative or new about that game that we haven't seen in other games. There's nothing new about it or innovative or create or creative. It's not. And anybody who says otherwise is lying to themselves and is just a hype beast. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, like I said, because I, as I said, I like games that just do what's done before, but just do it better and with your own twist. That's what Black Myth Wukong does. Black Myth Wukong does not do a goddamn thing. Maybe you might be able to point out, cut out and carve out some small, minute thing it does that another game hasn't done. But by and large, the gameplay, the story, the visuals. Bro, we've seen it before. We've played it before. I think I remember saying either in my. It might have been on Weapon Wheel that when I first just turned on Black Myth Wukong, it felt extremely familiar. You know, like when, sometimes when you get when you turn, turn on a new game, you get that uh, you have to have that adjustment period where you just adapt to the game and the gameplay style. Bro, I was like, yo, I felt like I played this game. Five times before. I felt like I adjusted to this game like it felt like a continuation of a game that I was just playing. So it wasn't nothing like particularly new. It, it was extremely familiar and safe. So this, this, I, I just, I just think it's, it's, I think gamers are lying to themselves when they say, oh yeah, we want new things. Or, well, not new. Let me say creative specifically. I think gamers are lying to themselves when they say they want things that are, Cre creative specifically eh, you want things that are the most important thing to you is is that it has to be good if it's good and creative cool but the creative part i think is just exaggerated a bit i think <laughs> gamers drastically exaggerate that they want some creative experiences i i i personally don't believe that um because once again, it's the, it's the vote with your, your wallet thing. If gamers are buying a, a certain thing, like people are complaining like, oh, Sean Layden, you know, you, you started this epidemic of the over the shoulder, uh, you know, cinematic um, third person shooter thing. I mean, if gamers didn't want it, it wouldn't sell. And once again, you, you can account for, OK, well, it, it, you can account for like, OK, the possibility of, OK, they're putting it out there. So there's and, and maybe you can pitch. Oh, it's being force fed to gamers because I, I do think it, there's a there's an element to, OK, it's being force fed to them. So it's being accepted. But there's a lot of things in the industry that try to that are, you know, that are tried to they try to force feed it to consumers, but it don't work. I, I think course correction happens. And gamers will spit it back out. I mean, the whole third person over the shoulder shit template that people complain about. Bro, gamers like that shit. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all could hate on it because it's it's popular now. Motherfuckers like that shit. They like it. I'm sorry, no matter how much y'all complain about it in y'all little circle, in y'all little bubbles and circles. Not only do you, the, the, the ones who complain about it, they like it, they buy it. They buy it, y'all. So y'all are also guilty of it, of supporting it. I get that y'all don't like the overabundance of it, but y'all buy it too and y'all like it. And it's not just a PlayStation 
it's not a, an exclu- exclusively PlayStation thing. Um, it, it's it's because people are are blaming like Sean Layden. It's like the Resident Evil Four, what some people call the call the Resident Evil Four effect. Like some people blame Resident Evil Four for the for what happened in six, five, and six. And I don't. I personally, where where you know, and that's where Resident Evil, you know, started to transition from this more of a pure horror survival game into this action game. I don't blame Resident Evil 4 for 5 and 6. I blame I blame Call of Duty more for Resident Evil 6 and I think the developers even admitted that that what was what caused them to go with the direction of 6. And I don't mind Resident Evil 5. And everybody knows Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games of of all time. Um And once again, I think that's gamers with the success of four and five. I think that's gamers saying they also want that. They want that balance. They didn't want it to go all the way to where six went, but they wanted it more around re- the Resident Evil series to start start and stay around how four and, and, and five was. So. Listen, it is what it is. Um. I don't think you can blame a suit and a CEO because if game once again, if gamers didn't like it, they wouldn't buy it. Same way, same way they 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 didn't buy it like bro. Dreams didn't sell. That's a very, you know, and y'all know, yes, I, I don't like Media Molecule. Um, I have a bias towards them because I think, that, you know, I think their games are bullshit. But bro, dreams did not sell. Gamers did not give a fuck about that creative shit. You can look at the most creative games and see nobody gives a fuck about it. Dreams didn't sell. Um, what's that other game that the PlayStation Studio made with, with the graffiti art uh, that they shut down the studio? That shit didn't sell. And you can, I think you, it's not a, exclusively a PlayStation thing. You can look across the industry, see, see these games that are um, doing, trying to do something different, trying to do something creative, and they're failing. Nobody and people are not supporting it. There are some exceptions where you'll see the unconventional game that typically wouldn't be a success, be a breakaway success. But by and large, those are those are not. That's not what's working. That's not what's working. Um, by and large, so I think people got to come to the acceptance that we know what we want. You can. You could say you want something, but let's see what you're buying. Because I think a lot of people are grandstanding and virtue signaling. Okay, yeah, oh, creativity is dead. It's your fault. Let me see every game you bought in 2024. I, I, don't, care, I don't care what you talk about. Let me see what games you have bought in 2024. Let me see what games you have beat in 2024. If that don't match up with what you're saying, oh, yeah, get, you, you need to shut the fuck up. I need to see your games bought and beat. And if it don't line up with what you be saying, like, oh, we want creativity and up. Mm. Mm. Okay. Listen, you walk it how you talk it, bro. As, as a man once said, your audio ain't matching your visual. So I don't know if I believe most of these people when they say w- what they want. When you, you say you want one thing, but you buying another. So, yeah, let me see that game's bought list and that game's beat list. That'll tell me a lot about you. It'll tell me a lot about you. So, uh, yeah, those are my, that's my thoughts on this. I think, I think I covered everything I wanted to say. Um, yeah, uh, people complain about remakes. They complain about this, complain about that. But, hey, look what's, look what's selling. Look what's selling. So, uh, it's the... It's the games that are just doing the, and I would argue it, the best games, I would argue the best games quality wise are also the games that are not doing something new, but are looking at what's already been done and just expanding upon that, like I said, and increasing the level of quality and production, just stepping up, stepping, stepping up the level of that. So yeah, let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Uh, follow me on Twitter. We'll talk about this more on Weapon Wheel. Uh, hit the like button, all that good shit. Peace.